Don't smirk, Patton. I shan't kiss you. It's a pity, because I shaved very close this morning in preparation for getting smacked by you. I first really became, I think, essentially confronted by <laughs> the man who was George C. Scott when I was about 13 years old. Patton was a movie that had been on my father's radar for several months before we had an opportunity to see it. I don't think I had ever seen someone with so much authority. Instantly, within about 10 minutes, I had like a new favorite actor of all time, and it was George C. Scott. We're going to cut out their living guts and use them to grease the treads of our tanks. We're going to murder those lousy hun bastards by the bush. Nobody just walks out on stage and does that in a movie and basically owns it from there on in. And the flaws of the character, the same things that made George C. Scott's Patton such a transfixing spectacle at the beginning of the movie, began to be depicted as exactly also why he was probably the most dangerous officer on the ground during World War II. Patton was the movie, I think, for which George C. Scott, if he's going to be remembered, will probably always be remembered. Come on, you bastard! Take a shot at me right in the nose! Get back in here, George! We need a corps commander, not a casualty! Really, the only person who ever, I think, successfully put George C. Scott in a comedy, interestingly, years earlier was Stanley Kubrick, when he cast him in Dr. Strangelove. Kubrick basically told him, look, I sort of want to test the performance, and I'm doing everything also as I shoot. At least one take is everything over the top. Everything over the top. And Scott agreed to that. He was also told that the cameras weren't running. But basically, the entire performance by Scott comes from those takes where he was encouraged to push the performance much, much further than he had intended to. I want her when you're finished with her. You are mad. One of the interesting things um, about, you know, the latter part of George C. Scott's career is that he would often be uh, cast in horror movies. I couldn't understand why I was being so constantly disappointed by these performances. The guy who had made Patton, right? Why wasn't he that guy over and over again? Well, to his credit, he was trying not to be that guy over and over again. He was trying to sort of uh, test his muscle. You believe in possession, Father? Who cares? I've got enough to do worrying about kids who need scholarships. The problem with George C. Scott movies was that the movie had to be big enough to contain him and make it credible within that framework. Whatever he's dealing with, the fact is, is that George C. Scott was always the most frightening thing in the film. You are crazy. <laughs> he refused to play out and out villains. He wouldn't do that. If he could play a person who had um, complexities to them, that is the terrain in which George C. Scott could be really well used. Take me home. Take me home. Please take me home. Take me home. George C. Scott was, I think, constantly at war with his own integrity. And he saw seriousness uh, uh, as something that he carried over from this very traditional, classical sort of stage uh, career. He is one of those actors who probably should have moved to England a long time ago and stayed there. Uh, and he probably would have had a much happier career on and off screen. In about 15 minutes, we're going to start turning these boys into fanatics, razors. They'll lose their fear of the Germans. And I hope to God they never lose their fear of me.